And while there are many people involved, the very essence of today is to talk and, and have a conversation with uh, an organization that I think has been at the leading forefront amongst many of the organizations. But Ulsa, who's here all the way from Washington, D.C., has been running Hindu action by the sheer grit of his determination and his resilience. Proximity to Washington, D.C. always helps. And along with that, there are many other organizations that I think are doing a tremendous amount of work to raise the bar, to seize the moment. So before we get started with this program, and we have a series of speakers today that I think you are going to be absolutely mesmerized by the work that they've done. It is our privilege, it is our honor, Utsav Chakravarti, to welcome you all and have you say a few words about this program. <coughs> and I know Utsav has a speaking slot today as well. We're going to end up, but in the fitting tradition that Jean said, we do need to have Utsav start up this evening. Utsav Chakravarti. Thank you, thank you, Yogi. Uh, so I am going to be coming back later and boring you with the 20 minutes presentation. But for now, I just want to thank everybody who is here because it was fighting and clashing with the presidential debate. But trust me, what you will see today and hear today is very, very relevant, not only for those of us who are in this country now, but for our future generations, our children and our grandchildren. And uh, I'm so glad that in a very short period of time, I could have the august blessings of Yogi Chuk, Dr. Ramesh Chakra, Jeevan Jutsi Ji, and the two Iyers, the Sri Iyer and Sundar Iyer. And uh, so it is, it is my privilege to be in this company, and it is my privilege that you all came here. I'll tell you more about what we are doing as we go by. I'll hand the mic over back to Yogi. So thank you very much. You know, not much has been said about Utsav, so when Utsav comes on, I do would like to say a few things. Washington, D.C. is a ruthless city. And Dr. Jaffer and I have been, for over the years, along with Jeevan, we've navigated the halls of Congress. It is a very unforgiving place. And unforgiving means that there are 400 members of Congress. Talking to each one of them is nearly impossible. And often enough, what I found in the last 10 decades is that there are many people who don't even understand that as Indian Americans, we're majority Hindu. Hindu Americans form the largest concentration of immigrants as a part of this India journey that has come to the United States. 5.5 million strong. Of that, 80%, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what that is. But today, something fundamental has happened. The corridors of Congress are resonating with the Hindu voice. And it is individuals like Utsav who are understanding that if you do not ask to get a seat at the table, that table will be taken up by others. And often enough, the reality of things is their interests are contradictory to our ideals, our values, that everything we believe in. But I will leave with Utsav on these few comments. He's resilient. He works hard. He never takes no for an answer. He's teachable. And the best part is he builds healthy, healthy coalitions with other organizations that you're going to hear about from today as well. Utsav is a remarkable human being. We had a hundred more like him in this town. We had 50 more. We could fundamentally shift the future. Watch for the work that Hindu Action is going to be doing. So we're going to start this program. Jeevan, you've been the host of this program along with many of the others. You've been able to come back and get us on a presidential debate. But thank God for the internet on the drive here. I hope all of you heard it. But let me give you a sneak preview. This was an interesting debate. Every side will say my guy did better, but <laughs> democracy wins. And I'll leave you with this. Every president is now looking at the Indian American community, Hindu majority, 80%. Seize the moment. And that is what we're here to do today. So Jeevan, you have been a leader. You've been a friend. You've been somebody who stood for the rights of Kashmiri pundits 30 years ago <coughs> when it was difficult. Now everybody wants to talk about Kashmiri pundits. You, Dr. Jaffer, you remember when the FBI gave us a briefing and said, cancel your program, you're going to get killed. And we said, you have one life to live. Um, if they're going to do something, hopefully it will inspire a lot more people to do something while Kashmiri pundits. 20 years, nobody did anything. But I'm happy to hear that post-Prime Minister Modi's decision, there has been a renewed awakening, even in many parts, 
the seed of Kashmiri Pandits in the plight, whether it's Sherrod Brown, whether it was um, Malone, Ackerman, Royce, friends that are no longer alive. But you built that, and now you've forged the Indo American Community Federation. You've now forged a unity event. It is such an honor to have you in the trenches with us every single day. A big round of applause for our dear friends. Thank you, Yogi. You have always been uh, the same yogi that I met, uh, you probably were 19 years old. <laughs> you know, if I, as uh, we just were reminiscing uh, those years and, uh, you know, Dr. Jabra, uh, it's still continuing and uh, things are going uh, even better, bigger and, uh, and you know. So I'm going to talk about uh, uh, advocacy that uh, uh, Utsavji uh, is doing and how important it is, we all know, uh, but um, you know, we'll again welcome Utsavji. Thank you very much for being here. I was actually very fortunate to meet Utsavji in 2019. You know, we had this big conference, uh, uh, Kashmir uh, briefing we did, uh, and uh, it became big because thanks to Utsavji and uh, and uh, uh, this uh, Rabha Prasadji, and we had about 225 people, and uh, you know it was it was it was wonderful. Eight senior congressmen, and it turned out to be a big show. Even though I should probably say this, but uh, everyone was uh, fine at the conference. Everybody was you know, fine and dandy and everything. And on the uh, couple of weeks later, we had the human rights, uh, the Tom Lantos thing. And I said, my God, I mean, these are the same people now they're there. But, uh, uh, but as we stand together, it's imperative to, uh, to reflect on the significance of our unity and purpose. We all know why Hindu advocacy matters. Uh, let me highlight a few key reasons which you are all aware of, but you know, I just uh, highlight them as, as I perceive them. Uh, firstly, it's about representation and visibility. In a multicultural society uh, like the United States, every community deserves to have its voice heard and its identity acknowledged. And like Yogi just said, uh, that a place on the table, I mean, we all have to be there. And uh, Hindu advocacy ensures that our festivals are recognized and celebrated, uh, that our dietary practices are respected, and our places of worship are protected. When Hindu traditions and contributions are visible and respected, it fosters a sense of belonging and pride among community members. Secondly, advocacy is crucial for combating stereotypes and misinformation, that's what we are seeing, that's what has been happening. Hinduism is often misunderstood or misrepresented in media and publications. And uh, these inaccuracies can lead to prejudice and discrimination. Through education and outreach, Hindu advocacy works to correct the misconceptions and provides accurate information about our beliefs and practices. Moreover, Hindu advocacy plays a vital role in protecting religious freedom and ensuring equal treatment under the law. It involves engaging with policy makers and uh, participating in civic processes to address issues that affect Hindus, such as the right to religious attire, protection against hate crime, and inclusion of Hindu perspectives. Another uh, important aspect is the preservation of cultural heritage. In a rapidly globalizing world, maintaining our cultural identity can be challenging. Hindu advocacy supports efforts to teach younger generations about their heritage, ensuring that the wisdom and values of Hinduism continue to thrive. Finally, Hindu advocacy is about building alliances and contributing to the common good 
by engaging in interfaith initiatives and community service, we demonstrate the universal values of Hinduism, such as compassion, non-violence, and respect. In conclusion, Hindu advocacy in America is not just about advancing the interests of our community, it's about enriching the social fabric of the nation, promoting understanding and respect among diverse populations, and upholding the principles of justice and equality that are the foundation to American democracy itself. In this age of misinformation, narratives wield immense power. They can uplift or marginalize, empower or disenfranchise. As Indo-American Hindus, we navigate this landscape with a dual responsibility to ensure our voices are heard and our perspectives are understood and to contribute constructively to the discourse that defines our shared values. Yet, we must acknowledge the challenges posed by competing narratives. In today's world, sensationalism often trumps truth, where divisive rhetoric can overshadow recent debate. As we navigate this war of narratives, let's remember our shared humanity and the values that unite us. Let's embrace empathy and understanding, recognizing that diversity enriches our communities and strengthens our nation. Today, we confront not only the challenges within our community, but also the complexities of a global narrative that sometimes distorts our reality. In recent times, we have witnessed a troubling trend of leftist propaganda in the United States. Media and political spheres that often misrepresent India and undermines our shared values. The propaganda often portrays India through a narrow lens, focusing disproportionately on isolated incidents or political narratives that do not represent the diverse and dynamic reality of our nation. It ignores the strides India has made in promoting economic development, social justice, and cultural diversity. It overlooks the contributions of millions of Hindus and Indian Americans who enrich the fabric of American society. As members of the Hindu community and as American Indians, we must continue to challenge these misconceptions and counter divisive narratives. Moreover, we must recognize that leftist propaganda not only harms our community's reputation, but also jeopardizes our collective efforts for justice and equality. In today's interconnected world, where information spreads rapidly through various media channels, American Hindus must continue to engage in the war of narratives by employing strategic approaches. They must fight the war of narratives by actively engaging in constructive dialogue, promoting positive representations, advocating for their rights, and leveraging various platforms to shape narratives that accurately reflect their identities and contributions to society. Through these efforts, they strive to build a more inclusive and respectful society where diversity is celebrated and understood. Uh, as we all know, Hindu phobia has been in the news recently due to a series of attacks on Hindu temples in the Bay Area and you know, six or more uh, temples in only just two months in December and January uh, you know, were vandalized. The situation got so bad that five congressional representatives recently wrote a letter to the Department of Justice asking to, uh, to focus their attention and action. A comprehensive study conducted by researchers at Rutgers University in 2022 also revealed the widespread and insidious nature of Hindu. So despite this evidence, anti-Hindu groups are opposing the introduction of resolution HR 1131. I'm sure Utsarji will tell us more about HR 1131. Dr. Chapra has been also working on it and there are, you know, so many of uh, our Hindu leaders who have been trying to, uh, trying to do this. 
but um, thank you so much. Uh, it really is an opportunity uh, to be here, and uh, thank you again, Yogi. Thank you.